Bunny, please welcome Bunny the Shot Caller. Way up there. <laughs> Give me a minute, Sunny. <laughs> I almost forgot he came off. I'm sorry. How's everybody tonight? I was hoping he should he laughed for everybody else. You can laugh for me too, but then I don't know. <laughs> when I first got here, he was handing out these things. I was like, oh, cool, a souvenir. Then I saw it said Louis Cleaner. <laughs> okay, who are in here working at Lewis Cleaner and getting advertising for free? <laughs> and then as I was coming up, one of my friends said, you gonna take your place up there? Hell yeah, that's why I keep my money. <laughs> so why wouldn't I take it with me? <laughs> and I've been sitting over there listening to people talking. I actually got lost in the woods on August 4th in the Oregon National Forest. <laughs> You know them two little chipmunks from the insurance commercial that run out to the road and make you wreck your car? They was all up there, they had all their homies with them. I'm like, don't stop, don't stop. <laughs> all the old cartoon characters was up there, Bull Winkle, Rocky, Quick Brown Madron. And up in the woods, they come right up to the car and shit. I'm really panicking because my cell phone just went out. But I had my cousin with me and he bigger than any bears. He was asleep. That motherfucker rolled over and forded and all the animals scattered. I knew I'd be okay. I knew he had a problem because we from California. But my friend Jeanette had been living in Oregon for about 15 years. So when my partner made the left and this lady in a white car was looking at us as if to say, where the fuck are they going? I panicked. I was like, I think we need to call Ned. I think we need to call Ned. My friend with me, she's from California too. My GPS device is working. I told the bitch, you from California and you bought that phone from California. That means the bitch in the phone is from California and don't know nothing about Oregon. <laughs> she wouldn't listen to me. We were up there for hours. They swear it was an hour and a half. I didn't see no human life. And I'm up there thinking, shit, this is a rent a car, trying to get it together. Because that's true. The black people do always die first in the movie. And I'm looking around the corner to see who the darkest, because I'm kind of like the bad for Mexican in some situations. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The driver was the darkest, so that wouldn't work, and I get to figure it on something else. Well, you know, if anything happened, we can feed him his big ass, and that'll give us time to get away. <laughs> but then we still be lost and we may need him to ride his big ass down this mountain. So I tell her, look, I don't know what you did last summer, but I know what the fuck you gonna do this summer. Something go out in that road, you hit it and keep moving. This a rental and we can report this motherfucker stolen in the morning. I didn't give a damn. Any vegetarians in here? Well, I'm a vegetarian. I like fruits and vegetables. Any dietitians in here? Well, when you got an eating disorder, they'll tell you to play with your food, but they don't tell you what kind of games to play. <laughs> so I kind of used to, when I was young, like to play hide the cucumber. <laughs> They got them three for a dollar and Lucky's always has it. <laughs> Plus, you know, if you don't like my show, you can booby and throw fruits and vegetables. But if you do, I'm hoping you throw the stuff I like, like cucumbers, bananas, and big zucchini squash. <laughs> my husband's in the penitentiary and I want to go home after the show and have good sex and a salad. <laughs> Like it used to. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm a grandmother. I know I don't look like it, thank you, but I am. I, and for the record, I got 16 and a little motherfucker, so you know I don't do no babysitting. Because with grandparents, it's like the kids will call around the 
see who coming to your house. You tell Michael he can come and then you look up as Michael Charles and James where they come from. I told you not to tell nobody you was coming. And then, unlike with my children, because I used to beat the hell out of them, I wanted to grow up right. I just can't bring myself to strike my grandkids. So one Saturday, my daughter bring the boys over. And the oldest boy, Michael, he's sitting there playing Nintendo Xbox or whatever it is. And as she's going out the door, she say, and don't be whooping my kids, he gonna do like this. Now, I thought we had discussed it before, but he young, he may have forgotten. When I told him, look, I ain't gonna whoop y'all. Y'all can do whatever you want, just don't get yourselves killed, hurt, or nothing that's gonna require me to get out the bed. <laughs> so he say, whoop us, whoop us, and he steady playing. <laughs> well, he don't whoop us. And I'm like, Mike, Mike, I know what's coming next. She let us do whatever we want to do. She say, she can't bring herself to strike her grandkids. Now my daughter pissed off. She think I'm a bad influence. And she, you know what that is? She got mad and told me, me, I'm not going to let you watch my kids no more. I tell her, bitch, you want to take them now because I'm tired and need a nap? <laughs> used to be too, and he can been picking a lock for the last year. <laughs> and like I told you about them fruits and vegetables, I had one in the room, a cucumber with a magnum on it, so he come in and he asked me, Willie, what's this? He too, I can't tell him it's a bag, he has a condom, so I tell him it's a bag. I come home from yet work yesterday, this little motherfucker walking around the house with a magnum with some fruit loose in it, talking about you want some. Get the lubricated kind, or he'd have had some soggy cereal. That's how 